Hi, this is Joe Rabel. We're going to talk further about the S&P today. Start with the monthly, work our way down. There's some interesting things taking place. I'm going to add in a new indicator that's, I think, worth looking at from time to time. I'm also going to introduce a new concept that I think is fairly important about how to look at what to look for with respect to breakouts and breakdowns in terms of whether they're uh, a quality breakout or a quality breakdown. So uh, let's get into the charts here. Um, uh, just going to focus on the S&P today. There's a lot going on, obviously, with uh, the current drop in the um, last few days. Uh, I think it's worth uh, studying this a little bit more closely. Uh, let's go to the monthly chart. And um, the first thing I'll say is that in the video on on Tuesday, the last video I did, I mentioned that we were pushing up through or at least trying to get through the monthly uh, 18 uh, moving average, which is at 2905. And we were briefly up there during the course of the uh, week, but uh, we've actually uh, kind of worked our way back down underneath. Um, and so, I, you know, I, right now we're at 2852 as of the close. Uh, I'm doing this as of the close on um, on Friday, on Thursday. So uh, I don't have the futures up for Friday morning or anything like that. I'm not sure how this is going to play out, but I think there's some keys that we can watch that I think will help a, a tremendous amount. But the first factor we want to take into account is that it looks like the 18 is still 18 on the monthly chart is still providing uh, resistance. If we go to the weekly, uh, you know, there's the last time I did the video, I mentioned that the MACD line was above its signal, but we wanted it to, to it needed to do that for the whole week to get above that signal line and stay above it to really be an operative signal that would be, you know, construed as something a little bit more positive. Um, so we're not there. We, we're, we still have another day left. I mean, if tomorrow is a big up day, then uh, it's very possible that this red line or the MACD line will cross above the blue signal line. And we will have a little bit of a, a, you know, a at least a weekly crossover signal. And I would view that again positively based on the fact that it, it just adds um, improving odds that that on a pullback, you've got, you know, a higher degree of likelihood that there's support underneath. Um, if we go to the daily chart, I think uh, you know there's a few things taking place now. The uh, the MACD has crossed down below its uh, signal line. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. Right now, that line at closed below uh, its signal line. So uh, we do have a crossover signal to the downside on the daily chart now. We've gone into the zone and we came out of the zone. And what we've been talking about is this prior low uh, as being a critical area. So uh, let's go down to the hourly now. And if you look at what's taking place, we actually undercut that low. So we had what we would what would qualify as a one, two, three change in trend. If you look at what took place, you have a break of the trend line. You came down, you rallied up and tested the high, made a slightly lower high. And then you, when you came down, you took out this prior low. So it, what this definitely qualifies is a one, two, three change in trend based on an hourly chart. Um, the uh, ADX pattern, uh, if we zoom in a little bit, is, is definitely pretty strong. I mean, Red DI has shown some good strength. What we're missing on an ADX basis is this, this signal that I have been talking about, which is we actually turn up from the 25 area or above. We haven't done that yet. We've made a down move with strength, which means the red DI has shown really good strength to the upside, but it hasn't actually fill, uh, formed a higher pivot low at or above 25. So that's somewhat of a key for me. Uh, and you know, there, there's a couple things that I want to go into a little bit more in depth. So if if you look at the analysis, the analysis is telling us that there was a one, two, three change in trend. But when you look at it from a trading standpoint, you got to be very careful. Whenever uh, you look at a, 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 any stock or any market that is breaking down or taking out a critical level, you have to evaluate whether it's overbought or oversold coming into that breakdown level or breakout level. So in this case, I'm gonna just talk about the breakdown level. And we've made a pretty big move all the way from say almost 29.50, not quite, all the way down 
to break out, break, break to the downside. And, you know, in this instance, uh, I, you know, I sort of look at it like um, if you break down from an oversold condition, you got to be very, very careful about doing any shorting in that in that situation, because you're you're basically uh, oversold into the breakout and you got to be very careful. I don't typically take trades on uh, when a market is breaking down if it's oversold. Uh, in a lot of cases, what I'd like to see, uh, there's a couple ways this can play out uh, that where I would do a, a short trade in this instance. If it's oversold, I'd probably make it break down and show a little bit more strength and then rally up to and fail at the breakdown level. Uh, so that's one choice. The other option is what's taking place right now, which is you break down and then you rally back up through and then you wait for a signal coming back down, uh, you know, a true signal coming back down off of this peak. If you make a lower high coming down off of this peak, I, you know, you could almost look at this red line and say, you know, if we come back through the red line, that would be like a second trigger entry. And you could take that signal with a little bit more confidence, knowing that you're not too oversold coming into it. Uh, you know, and, and if you did it that way, you could use this as a stop. So if if you make this come back down through the breakdown level of this prior low and use that as a stop, now all of a sudden the risk reward starts to make a little bit more sense. Because uh, what I want to point out is if I shorted this move, breaking that level, and I had to go and use this level as a stop, OK, I'm just going to take this now and add it to here. If you were to look at a one to one move, meaning the how much you'd have to risk to how much you would make and look at where this level would be. You're really right at the point where you start to come into support. And if I were looking at a target, uh, you know, I would probably throw the uh, Fib grid up. And. I would put a Fib grid here. To figure out what my downside target is for this trade. And if you look at where this level is, uh, you've you've got down to say 2648. If I uh if I go to um the 50% retracement is around 2550. So there is some room to trade to the downside, but if your stop, if your stop is too far away. It just doesn't make sense to do this trade. You basically have a one to one risk reward. So I'm, I'm giving you the reasons for why you got to be very careful about shorting when a, when a market is oversold. I'm going to switch to the daily chart and show you um, a new indicator I use. Uh, actually, I'm going to I'm going to use the uh, hourly chart, but I'm going to I'm going to switch it to a. Uh, uh, so look at the RSI as. This is breaking down and working its way down below this prior low. Um, the RSI is down under 10, the RSI 5. I use a short term RSI uh, to give me a pretty good idea of whether, you know, it's just overbought, oversold from a short term standpoint. And when you get above 80, above 85, above 90 to the upside, or you get down to under 15 or under 10 to the downside, you're getting really at an extreme. And so I don't want to short when something is getting that oversold. Uh, so you got to be really careful about doing any kind of a trigger, any kind of a sell signal uh, when a market is this overdone. And so I would let that overdone move rally up. And now we've gotten this this signal back to the upside. The problem I've got with what's taking place is that, uh, you know, you're getting a pretty strong rally. I mean, it's very possible we won't get a trigger to the downside. I mean, it it might it might turn down right here and start to you know reignite to the downside. And if it if that's the case, then I would say that's a pretty quality trigger trigger. Uh, but if it keeps pushing higher, we could it could just be one of these little false breakdowns and then it reverses back up. So you got to be on the lookout for that. You know, this pattern that I've shown you in the past, which is an undercut and rally. And if you look at the uh the hourly chart and kind of look at what's taking place. You just undercut uh, a pretty key level to the downside 
And, uh, you know, if if this thing pushes up, makes a higher low and then turns up, it's going to look a lot like this undercut and rally. So you need to be on the lookout for these type of patterns because we're at such a critical point. The, the, the market is trying to get you to make mistakes when the market is this volatile and, you know, activity is kind of nuts right now. I think a lot of people are looking at this 2800 level. So you got to realize that the first time down through it is probably not going to be the signal. Uh, maybe we rally up, maybe we fail right here and uh, and turn to the downside. And that signals a, a, a pretty good move to the downside. And, it, you know, again, if I put the uh, FIB levels up, you know, you're looking at um, somewhere in this area where, you know, 2550 to 2600 is being uh, pretty key. So uh, anyway, I hope this was helpful. Um, please hit the subscribe button. and We'll talk to you soon.